Today we're going to pop you, you up. up. We'll You're gonna be, be right stronger back. than before. Hear me now. Listen to me later. <laughs> With your little girly arms, <laughs> I welcome about to that. Wake Up, where we wake up. I am Pastor Hans. I'm Hans. I am Pastor Franz. <laughs> oh my god! Anyway, I didn't know you. It was great. He didn't know I was going to do that. He no. just he just flowed just right it. into. It. We got a great scripture for your day. I'm excited. Your message this weekend. I'm glad you joined us, but I, I got to get right into it. it. It's it's. I love this. I yeah, love your you. subject. I love what you're talking. This has always been something that you've you've uh, taught on and and loved. This in particular, I would teach this every week if they would let me. Yeah, this type of message because I think that the body needs it. And right when you told, right when I heard it, I go James one two. Yeah, that's my scripture. Yes, I have. They asked me what's what's your scripture. Dave Mitten asked me. He said, "What's your scripture?" I said, "James one two. I didn't even think about it. James one two is my scripture. Right, like for your life, it's like a defining scripture. Well, yeah. For you. What scripture defines your life? So I said, James one two, which is, my brethren, count it all joy when you face problems. Mm -hmm. When I have things that don't go my way. When I have something negative happen. Because what happens is it says it builds up your faith." It builds it up, mm -hmm. and it gets you to the place where you lack nothing. And so if I want to lack nothing, I have to have an opposition. I have to have, and it's not that God sends it. No. But in it's, fact, he says what it. happens in my life after I have the opposition, I should get stronger and not weaker. It says in James 1, 12, 13, and 14, don't say that God tested you. Now, no. when you say trial and test, you might think they're different words, but actually they're the same, same word. words. Yeah. So he, he's, God didn't bring it. Yeah. Okay, but it, there it is. Right? So we have to do the math. Okay? Well, why did it happen then? Well, it wasn't God. It just For sure. Yeah. It for sure wasn't God. But trial happened. Affliction happened. Adversity happened. There was a problem. There was a hardship. There was a storm. Right? And so here's the test. And it's, it's defining something that was specifically not from God. You can get stronger or you can get weaker. And, you know, you, I was reading this book a while back on kind of the subject mm -hmm. and they were talking about what's the difference between two women who were abused as children one carried it through whole life and it dealt with depression it was down and couldn't make relationships work couldn't do anything and the other one was Joyce Myers who or now our, or our mom or our mom and you see Joyce Myers now took what the enemy meant for weakness, meant to destroy her. Mm -hmm. And now she breaks his back with it. She says, oh, I was there. But let me tell you where I am now. And she can speak to women who are abused that a lot of us can't because we didn't go through that. So she now is breaking the back of what was supposed to break her. And in the media now, we're seeing just how under attack and oppressed women can be by the, the sexual aggression of men. Right. It's, and we're seeing it all over. The, it's a horrible thing that women go through that men don't ever have to go through this. It's terrible. It is. So, uh, but how, what you were saying, say it, I, want, I don't want but, to say it because you said it perfectly what you can take from it. So, so it says consider it pure joy. You're like, well, how am I going to do that? Uh, when you experience trials of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, right? Right. And then perseverance has this perfect worth, work so that we're lacking nothing. So God, there's a, it's a horrible situation that we live in on this planet sometimes. There's people with free will. There's men with free will. And, and so they're doing things that are terrible. Horrible. Uh, and, and all over this world, terrible things and horrible things happen. Uh, whether it's calamity or natural disasters or things, there's adversity. And everybody goes through different trials and tests and tough things. God didn't do it, but you're still here. So either you define that experience or you let the experience define you. I'd love that. You can either walk away with baggage your whole life and allow that moment of pain to continue your pain for the rest of your life and to inflict pain on everyone around you the rest of your life because it'll impact your marriage. It'll impact your children because you continue to carry it. But you have to remember that the reason you carry it is because you're allowing it to still lie to you. And, and how it lies to you is it, t it tells you that you're to blame for what happened. It tells you that God's to blame for what happened. When you dismiss those two things, you let go of the baggage. And the baggage, see, we carry one of two things. John, or, uh, James said this in just a few scriptures later. He said that after enduring the test with perseverance, we stand, and yep. having stood the test, we gain the crown. I love it. So, so you remember, God never meant for this to happen to you in your life, but you're reprogramming your mind a little bit. And you're saying, okay, 
uh, it happened, am I going to allow it to make me weaker or stronger? Because adversity can make you stronger. I'm here. You wouldn't believe what I went through and the resilience I have because of what I went through. And I'm stronger than probably other people because of what I've seen at Joyce Myers. I'm stronger. God didn't do it, but he got me through it. And I can either you take... You can be a victim or you can be a victor. I was thinking wow. about your... What if my muscles had a free will? And you weren't, <laughs> right? And you, you, How do you make your muscles stronger? They have to be tore down, and it is the tore, tearing down That's that right. allows them to come back stronger. That's right. But if they're like, well, no, you know what? I did 50 push-ups yesterday. I'm done. Yeah. A weightlifter will tell you that you, it's through injury that you gain strength. Right. And so you purpose you, but we're not, obviously you didn't purposefully injure yourself. No, of course and, not. But no, no, there's no, no, no. a strength that can come from this. And you can either take baggage or you can take a crown. This is what you can do. You can either take sorrow. And if you take sorrow, now you have to take pills. If you take uh, depression and wounds, now you have to take medication. But instead, God said, you can go back and redefine that moment. He says, I will rebuild you, O afflicted city lashed by storms. Right? Wow. God says, I'm going to rebuild you. I get it. He says, I'm the Lord who comforts you and has compassion on you. And this is Isaiah chapter 54 that I'm quoting. And so he, he's saying you can either take baggage or a crown. The crown will exalt you and make you stronger. The baggage will continue to impact your tomorrow. And it's all about how you decide to define that moment and how that moment impacted you. Did you define it as a strengthening moment? Uh -huh. It was horrible. And how are you going to gain strength from it? Only through the grace of God, through the power and strength of Jesus Christ, can you redeem that with the blood of the Lamb and allow that moment, how hideous it was, and knowing that God never intended it for it to happen to you, but only has good in mind for you, He can restore to you double what was stolen. It's a bounce back principle. Mm. You know, a ball hits with the pressure that it hits is how high it goes, and that's what God wants to do. Yet, yeah, God didn't throw you down. But life sometimes throws you down. And resilience is that ability. Resilience, when they, they measure the resilience of something, it's how, how much it bounces back. Oh. And so my question for you today is how much are you going to bounce back? How high are you going to go? See, something that's not resilience, you throw a marshmallow down, it just goes boop. Don't okay. be a marshmallow. Be a, Marshm marshmallow. <laughs> a marshmallow just goes boop and it just sits there. But something with high resilience in it. Something that can say, hey, I know it. I went through a divorce and he left me with, with all the kids and all of the junk. But guess what? God is strong in my weakness and that I am resilient in him and I'm going to get my crown. And I know what I'm going to look for in the future, man. And so, God, right now I'm going to pour myself into my kids, into my life. And this is what I'm going to do. And you see yourself bounce back. And what the enemy meant to break you, mm. you break the enemy. What did you, it say? God works out all things for the good. Now, he didn't do it. But he, but he can, can find a way glory. to turn it around and make it good in your life. He can find it a way to make it strong in your life. I look, at, I look at my sis, my sis Dion, our sis, and what oh. she had to go through and, and raising the kids on their own. And now they're in college, right? They're, they're just great, incredible. And you see that God was able, now she can go forth and talk to other single. And that's what I do. Anytime a woman's with, with, with a, just a bum, a loser, I'm like, oh, you need to talk to Dion. Just let Dion have a word with you yeah. and tell you why you don't want to stay with this, this bum. Yeah, because she went through a lot of stuff. So we should have her on the show. We should have her on the show. She's you know what? We're going to have her on the show uh, in a couple days. Just be watching. We're going to have her on the show. We're going to talk about this more. Why don't we do this on uh, Thursday? I love it. Okay. Resilience. Yeah. Bounce back. And uh, let's pray over your day. Dear Father, Lord, we ask that you you'd bless them, Lord. Help them to realize that the hurts and the pains that they have gone through, that you can... Turn it around. Yes, Lord. They can't do it, but you can. Mm. And that what the enemy meant to break them, we use to break the enemy's back. That what the enemy meant to throw us down with and keep us down, we're resilient and we, and we bounce back. We bounce even higher. And so we thank you and praise you that we can take the bad and we can make it amazing. And so we thank you and praise you, Lord, that we're going to go forth and we're going to be a bright light and a glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you guys. Thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, be in God's house this weekend. This weekend. Don't forget we have a big Christmas event coming up for you ladies, and they're going to run that advertisement for you right now.
Nowhere in the New Testament is this word trial in the original language used as something God would give you. Okay, so when he says various kinds, he's talking about tests that come from people, tests that come from Mother Nature, life, death. That's, you know, we live on a messed up planet. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, and then there's a Satan to add to that. So there's various kinds of messes, but God didn't do it, right? God didn't do it, but he got you through it. Ooh. You're still here. You're still breathing. I don't know what happened to you. But he says, consider it pure joy when you experience trials of many kinds because we know that the testing of our faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you might be complete and lacking nothing. So something about to get better if you can change your attitude about what happened to you. I don't know when it happened, maybe 5, 10, 20 years ago. But if you, why does God care about how you, what your attitude or your emotional disposition is towards something that happened to you years ago? Why? Why even bring it up, Lord? It's because he knows that there's victory in your right now if you can learn to redefine what happened to you then.